So we're going to do our introduction to logarithmic functions now. The previous week, it wasn't necessary that you even understand what a logarithm is just to see how to, what it looks like and how to move it around with transformations. Now, now we're going to talk about what it is. And the, just the basic answer that doesn't tell you much is that logarithmic functions are the inverse functions of exponential functions. And we're going to actually go through the process of finding uh, the logarithmic function as the inverse of an exponential function. But right now, we're just going to look at what some of those um, inverse functions are. Suppose you have the exponential function f of x equals 3 to the x. Then its inverse is going to be log base 3 of x. Notice that the 3 here is the base of the exponent. The 3 here is still called the base, but it's written as a subscript. OK, if we have f of x equals 7 to the x, then the inverse function is going to be log base 7 of x. And if you have log equal, uh, f of x equals 10 to the x, then the inverse function is what we call the common logarithm, which is log x. It's really base 10, but we don't write the 10. So it looks like there is no base there, but there is a base. It's an invisible 10. And then even stranger, perhaps, if you have, if you have f of x equals e to the x, then its inverse is going to be the natural logarithm, which is called the ln of x, the natural logarithm. And what this really is, though, is, oh, oh, what that really is, wait a minute, hope I got rid of it, what this is, is log base e of x, where e is a number that's about 2.7, so it's just, um, it's a number like pi, you know, sometimes you see pi, sometimes you see e. We're going to see e a lot. Okay. Now, you've studied, and in a couple of different semesters, you've studied the rules, the basic rules of exponents. Like when you multiply, like bases, you add the exponents. When you divide like bases, you subtract the exponents. And when you have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, um, you multiply your exponents. But logarithms are exponents. They actually are the exponents themselves. So we're going to look at how these rules of exponents apply to and are used by logarithms. So right over here, besides the, uh, the rules of exponents, which here I've got x to the 3 times x to the 2 is x, to the 3 plus 2, which is x to the 5. Well, here we have log base 3, and I decided to use numbers because they're much more familiar to us. Um, the log, log base 3 of 14 plus log base 3 of 2, notice that the bases are the same, so that what this is, is log base 3 of the multiplication of the two arguments, 14 times 2, 
which is log base three of 28. You do have to memorize these. So you need to put it, write them on your flashcards the best way. Okay, so x to the three times x to the two is x to the three plus two. Um, here we have log base three of 14 times two. You can break that apart this way into log base three of 14 plus log base three of two. Now the quotient rule, x to the seventh over x to the three is x to the seven minus three, which is x to the four. Well, suppose you have the logarithm uh, base 17. The base is not the, the most important part, so I just chose that number out of the air and you could choose something else. But log base 17 of the fraction 5 over 14 is going to be log base 17 of 5 minus log base 17 of 14. Remembering that these are the exponents, these guys are doing what these guys are doing up here. Now the power rule, if you've got a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. Well, over here, if you have the ln, which is log base e, if you have the ln of x to the third power, then the way the product rule works in logarithms is that this exponent three comes down in front and multiplies the ln of x. So you get three times the ln of x. And now the zero power rule says that any number raised to a zero power is one. Well, over here in logarithms, suppose we have log base nine of one. Well, that equals zero. And the ln of one is zero. And log to any base of one is going to be zero. Guaranteed. Now the power of one rule says that any number raised to the one power is just the number itself. Well, the way that works with logarithms is when you've got the base and the argument, this is the argument, when the base and the argument are exactly the same number, the answer you get is one. Log base 10, uh, well, log base 10, remember there's a 10 down here. Log base 10 of 10 is one. The ln of E is one because the ln of E is log base E of E. And here, E and E. E is the base, E is the argument, therefore the answer is one. And in fact, log base B, any base, any base, log base B of B is gonna be one. Whenever these guys are the same, the answer is one. So these two rules are rules we're gonna use a lot, especially this one. This one is a wonderful rule. Okay, so now let's find the inverse function of this, this exponential function. But first let's go through, pretend you don't see this over here. Let's just pick any function and go through those four steps of what it is to find 
the inverse of a logarithm. So let's say that f of x equals, I don't know, 3x plus 2, my very, very favorite, favorite linear function. We have four steps that we go to. Step one, you change the f of x to y. Step two, you switch the x's and y's. Step three, you solve for y. So I'll subtract two from both sides. Actually, I don't have to do that, do I? Um, and I should definitely do it on another line. Okay, we'll do that. X equals 3y plus 2. I subtract 2 from both sides. Two minus two is zero, so I'm left with three y equals x minus two. Then to get y by itself, I divide by three and divide by three. And the threes over in front of the y cancel. So the fourth step is just to say, okay, I understand f inverse of x, that is the inverse function of our original f of x. We had f of x equals 3x plus 2. The inverse function is going to be x minus 2 over 3. So that was just a review of the steps. This has nothing to do with uh, what we're talking about with exponentials and logarithmic functions. I just wanted to remind you because we're going to go through exactly the same steps here. F of X equals five to the X. Let me have a drink. <clears throat> F of X equals five to the X. Step one, I change f of x to y. <clears throat> so we have y equals five to the x. Step two, we switch the x and the y. So x equals five to the y. Three, we solve for x. But how would you know that? If I hadn't written it down here, and you should be honored to know that that puts you in the same class with the most brilliant minds in math mathematics all through the Middle Ages and even into the Renaissance. Nobody could do it. They knew it existed because this, the graph of y equals 5 to the x, looks like that. It's definitely a one-to-one -one function which means it definitely has an inverse. But what is the inverse? And then a Scottish philosopher and mathematician found the answer by accident. And now the way we write it is this, y equals log base five of x. So the inverse function of f of x equals 5 to the x is log base 5 of x. Not that simple. You do have to remember it. The key is to remember that the base that holds up the exponent when you have an exponential function goes down here. Okay. Now, here are some examples. We're going to be spending an hour or so just working on this. How do you change 
a logarithmic function to an exponential function, an equivalent exponential function, more than an equivalent exponential function, an exactly equal exponential function. That's what that symbol means. They're identical is what that means. So how do you do it? How do you do it? Good grief, how do you do it? Well, here's how. If you can remember three words and then treat them like a puzzle that you put in different places. So here we go. Here's our logarithmic function. That is true. Log base seven of 49 equals two. And that's exactly equivalent, or you could even say this is true because seven to the second power, seven squared is 49. And so the two goes here, the seven goes down there, and the 49 goes here. And here is how all exponential functions are set up. If we were to put it in words. Words. Wanted to make sure I said that. You've got the word log or LN. But let's just talk about logs right now. You've got the log. You've got the base. The argument is up here on the same level with the, with the log, the word log. The base is slightly lower and it's called a subscript. But this is back on ground level right here. Now what that equals is the exponent. That's why we say a logarithm is an exponent because when you take the log of a number, you get the exponent such that if you raise the base to the exponent, you get the argument, which can also be thought of as the answer because that's what it is over here. This base, goes here for an exponential function. This exponent goes here. And this argument goes over here and becomes the answer. That is whatever the base raised to the exponent is, is this answer. Thank goodness they have the same first letter. It's an A any way you look at it. So log, base, argument, exponent. Log to a particular base of an argument equals an exponent. And over on the exponential side, a base raised to an exponent equals an answer that is the argument of the matching logarithm function. Now I know that sounds like gobbledygook, but we're going to do 17 problems that will cement this into your psyche. And we're gonna do it right now. When we're done here, we'll take a break, and then we're going to look at the arithmetic of logarithms. Okay, now. Here we are. Watch the video. All of these have videos, I erased them. We're going to actually do the problems from scratch. One through, oh, 
1 through 12. Not that many at all. And then there's 13. That's a doozy. I know you're glad to hear it, right? Yeah, we're going to go we're going to have to go over this very very carefully and explain every move. But you've got to be able to do these problems first before you can understand it. So notice I left the answers in. And this is what we're going to do with all of them. We're going to convert this logarithm statement to an ex to the equivalent exponential statement. We're not going to be finding answers. The answers are already there. Log base three of two forty three is five. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to have three words here. Alright, so I'm going to write them down and it's going to be true for the next 11 problems. 12, all of them. 13 problems. Alright, you're going to have a base in both problems. And in my wisdom, I'm going to call it. Base. Because it's such a short word. And then you've got an exponent. That's a pretty long word. So I'm going to call it EXP. And then we have the argument. which face it is also an answer when you're when you're doing exponentials but i am going to refer to both of these as my really favorite word arg so we're going to have base exp and arg. And what we have to do is identify those components. So over here, 8 is the base. Let me let me make this bigger. Okay. 8 is the base. One third is the exponent. And 2 is the answer you get, but I'm going to call it arg. Because when we translate this, to an exactly equivalent logarithmic function, expression, statement. We're going to have log to the base eight No, I don't want to do it that way. I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive, OK? I am. Math teachers are like that. Um, here, log base eight of two equals one third. So now this is the base. 
This is the argument. This is the exponent. And that is what they are looking for. Got the answers over here. Log base eight of two equals one third. And at least in the beginning, I'm gonna go around labeling everything. Base arg exp. And I'm gonna go over here, make that smaller because I need for it to be skinnier. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Actually, we're going to do this over and over and over again. You're going to be very bored with it. Here's a logarithm function. It is set up in the following way. This should be lower and smaller. If I were the publisher, I would make it happen. Base. Arg. Exp. Okay, that's the way all logarithms are set up. Now, to change this to an equivalent exponential function, we have to set it up like this. Base, exponent, answer or argument. So it's just a matter of transferring this to there, this to there, and arg to there. So that what this will translate into for us is three Three to the fifth power equals 243. And if you put that into your calculator, it's true. Three times three times three times three times three is 243. I think that's amazing. Now we're going to convert to a logarithmic equation from an exponential equation. Okay, this is the base. Base. Three is the exponent. So 10 to the third power equals 1000. That's true. This is going to be, our, this is our answer here but it will become our argument, our argument. All right, we're going to have the word log. Now the base is going to be down here. The exponent is going to be over here. And the argument is going to be in here. So I really should have written this base. So we're going to have log base 10 of 1000 equals 
three. You could do this if you have a problem. Um, 10 to what power equals 1,000? Just find the log of 1,000 and you'll have the exponent. Because remember, with log base 10, we don't normally write that answer. We don't normally write the base down there. So really, the way you would really and truly write it would just be log 1000 equals three. And notice over here, just to be nice, because it's in the beginning for you, um, they write it with 10 as the base. But if you wrote it log 1000 equals three, that would be fine. Excuse me. Again, I mean, we're gonna be doing the same thing over and over, but that's the way you learn. Here you've got the base holding up the exponent, that's the way I was taught to figure it out, I mean, to memorize it, that the base holds up the exponent. So, I mean, that is just so ingrained in me now that I know it immediately. This is sort of the other number, right? You don't, maybe you're not gonna use the word argument, but you sure can remember a base because bases tend to be big and then they hold up stuff, right? Like uh, the column of a courthouse holds up the roof, part of the roof. And then they usually have Greek figures on it, you know, the way courthouses look. Um, anyway, this number over here, four is the, uh, oh, argument. It will be the argument when we change to an equivalent logarithmic function in which we have log base exponent and the argument is the other number. So we're going to have log, wow, base 1024 equals 4. Uh uh, I lied. Equals 1 fifth. 1 fifth is the exponent. And four is that other number that we call the argument. And then check over here. And indeed, that's what you've got. Um, you're going to notice that every time you get an answer in your, your every time you work a logarithm problem, in your calculator, you must have parentheses around both sides of your argument, and there's no choice there. So if I had to make any recommendation for the second um, version of this book, the second edition of this book, it would be to please, please, please put parentheses around the arguments. Life will be easier for our students and for our teachers because when I learned it, I would get marked down if I didn't put parentheses around my arguments. Now, I'm not going to do that to you, but that's only because I'm incredibly nice. And your book, your book doesn't do it. Not unless there's more than one term in the argument then they do do it, they have to. Okay, E here, we've got E to the power two equals T. E is the base. Two is the exponent. T is the argument. 
and we can translate this into a logarithmic function. Log. Base E. Equals two and the argument is that other number or letter T. Now, my math lab might say you're wrong there. That is, you've got it right, but you've got the wrong form. And here's why. Log base E is written LN. The LN of T equals 2. So there we are with the ln of t equals 2. Now, as weird as this is, e to the 1 power equals 2.7183. That's not exact. Um, but this is the base. Oh, what did I do it that way for? I'm the world's worst at writing sideways. That's the base. This is the exponent. This is the argument or the answer. And Making this into a logarithm. We're going to have log base E again, which will change. Log base E equals one of 2.7183. How do you get away with doing that? And the answer is that E is about that. So we can write this as n of 2.7183 equals, pull it over, 1. And there we go, the ln of Well, I didn't put parentheses around it either. Judge not. Okay. If you do all of these problems by hand, the writing, and especially if you talk to yourself, and you're moving your hand, you will memorize this in no time at all. Okay. Since this is the problem at the top of the page, let's write it out the long way, long way now. Log. Exponent argument which will give us, except smart me, R and K, right? R. Well, I'm going to do it here. This is called taking notes. The base is R. The uh, exponent is K, and the other number is 144. So it's easy -er to write it like that.
So there. It's probably the best way to do it. Now we're going to convert from a logarithm to an exponent, exponential equation. So convert from, from a logarithmic equation to an exponential equation. First, identify the parts. This is the base. This is the exponent. And this is the argument. And what we're going to be translating it into is the base be nice and fancy about it, raised to the exponent equals the answer or the arg. So it's easy enough really to just come down here and write five to the three equals one twenty five, which is true. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Okay. Now, here's a tricky one. They're trying to be tricky. When you don't see a base, there is a base, doggone it. Log base 10. This is the base. This is the exponent, negative 3. This is the argument. So the equivalent exponential form will be base raised to exponent equals the answer you get, which is the argument. So the base is 10, you're gonna have 10 raised to the negative three power equals 0 0.001. Let me save this. Okay. Now the ln of four is that number. Let's rewrite it first. Log base e of four equals one point three eight. Six, three, which is a rounded number. Okay, this is the base. This is the exponent. Don't often see an exponent that is a decimal, but you will now. And this is the argument. So we're going to write this in the form of log, uh-uh, no we're not. Don't let me lie to you. I'm gonna write it in the form of a base raised to exponent equals argument and so all I have to do is go back and peek over here. Oh, I already have it. E is the base, 
uh, 1.3863 equals four. And there we have that. Okay, we're almost done with this, with the easy part of it. Here's the base. Here's the exponent. Here's the argument. And I'm going to translate that to the format. Base. raised to the exponent equals the answer or the argument. So the base is P. I'm going to write these like this for the moment. This is capital V and you must have just uh, must have learned by now that when my math lab Cap capitalizes a variable, you have to capitalize a variable or it's counted wrong. And that's true because in algebra, a capital V and a little v can stand a non-capital, lowercase v. A capital V and a lowercase v can stand for two entirely different things. So you have to be careful there. And all right. No, 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 that's the argument. That's what I get for talking. Um, no, the exponent is negative Z. And the argument is capital V. And so what we're going to write is P to the negative Z equals V. What does it stand for? I have no idea just a bunch of letters, but it could be a formula of some kind. And indeed, P to the negative Z equals capital V. You'll often see V's used when you're uh, dealing with electricity because of voltage. That doesn't mean that this is a real formula, I don't know if it is or if it's not. All right, now we have one more of these to do. They have it turned around the other way, but they can't trick you. Here's your base. If that's the base, then over on the other side of the equal sign is the exponent. And what's left is the argument. So when we translate this, we are going to put, oh well, let's write the formula. Base raised to the exponent equals the argument so we're going to have n raised to the x equals v to the third There. All right.
after you do this, I would be willing to wager a whole nickel that you will never forget them, at least not in this school year. How you translate from an exponential function uh, equation, because it is an equation. How to translate from an exponential equation to a logarithmic equation and how to translate from a logarithmic equation to an exponential equation. Okay, I need to add a page here. There it is. Okay. Here we've got this and I'm going to do something else while I'm at it, namely What we have here is a logarithmic inequality. It's definitely an inequality. Ooh. A little large. That's so I don't need to keep flipping back. Okay. All right, first let's look at what this really says. What this really says is, what is the interval on the x-axis where? Log base three of three x plus 16. Where is it below, strictly below the line y equals Zero. That's what it really says, and I suppose here, f of x. Where is f of x equals log base 3 of 3x plus 16 strictly less than or strictly below not even touching, but strictly below the line y equals zero. Well, if you were to graph the line y equals zero, you would see that that is a horizontal line going through y equals zero. And that's the x-axis. So our secret. So let's rewrite this. Where is f of x equals log base 3 of 3x plus 16 strictly below the x-axis. Well, 
when you're dealing with like polynomial inequalities or here a logarithmic inequality or or some kind of inequality like that three signs three possible signs you've got less than zero greater than zero equals zero. Equals zero is something you're used to. Solve the equation for x. This is where the graph of f of x, whatever that might be, whatever you're doing the inequality for, this will tell you where the x-intercepts are or the zeros, more precisely, the zeros. But what about these guys? Let me pull this over as far as I can. Yeah. What this says is, for what intervals on the x-axis is f of x, whatever the f of x is you're dealing with, is f of x below the x-axis. This says, greater than zero, says for what intervals on the x-axis is f of x above the x-axis, question mark. And so what this says is where is f of x on the x-axis? That is crosses or touches. Let's say touches. Where is f of x touching? the x-axis. Now, while we're at it, less than or equal to includes less than zero and equal to zero. So those meanings and greater than or equal to includes um, the meanings of greater than zero and equals zero. So 
So both of these would include the intervals on the x-axis and the x-intercepts. So that's what we're asking here. We're not including the x-axis. This is a strict inequality. Well, let's take a look at the graph. We're going to graph this two ways that are identical. OK, the first thing I'm going to do is go to log base. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the change of base formula, which is great for people who do not have log base on their calculators. All right, so the first thing I do, I'm going to do is log base. What I do is I click on the math button. And then I proceed to go down, 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 down down, 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 down to A. And when I get to log base, I click on it. Now that has a little box for me to put the base in and a little box for me to put the argument in. So I believe that the base is three. Or is it? See, that's the problem here. Log base three? Yeah, log base three of three X plus 16. Okay. And then three X three X plus 16. Now, before I graph it, here's a method that you can use if you do not have log base on your calculator. Click on the log button right there, log, L-O-G, log, and type the argument 3x plus 16 and close your parentheses. Then hit the divide button. And once again, click on log. Now you're going to take the log, you're going to put the base three in here. That is the change of base formula. These will give you identical answers and if they don't, it means I, get, I did something wrong. Now, what this ought to do is it ought to graph the blue graph first and then graph the red graph and you won't be able to tell the difference. That means they're identical. So let's graph. The red one is actually more, <laughs> the red one is more accurate. Actually, it's not. Oh, it is. The blue one isn't. The blue one could give you entirely the wrong idea. Well, now we know if you want an accurate graph. If you want an accurate graph, you need to. What do I need to do? You need to not use log base. That's an eye opener.
use the change of base formula. I'm going to write it down here. The change of base formula. Okay, another way to write f of x equals log base 3 of 3x plus 16. And here it is. And this is more accurate. Accurate, yeah, that's right. It's more accurate. All right, well, we'll do this from now on. Um, okay. So I am then, I'm go I've already cleared that out. Now I'm going to do it again up here. All right, I am going to just push, click on the log button. 3x plus 16, 3x plus 16, close parentheses divided by log, hit the log button again, of three. See, it's called the change of base formula because we've changed the base to 10. The base of the log button here is 10. So, we are now going to graph this. Okay, now what you have to remember is that logarithms have vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to, I can't draw on it here, but I can bring it to the paper and draw on it. So, You know, that's a pretty bad graph. Window. No wonder. Well, why don't I just go zoom six and change it back to the standard window? Duh. There you go. Okay. Um, paper. Yeah. All right. So here's the graph. Which I need. Because I need to draw on it. Okay, this keeps going down. So I'm going to do that. Oh, I can't. Wait a minute. 
There you go. OK. It doesn't go straight down. It gets closer and closer and closer to whatever that point is because that that is going to be the vertical asymptote. Now just looking at this, we can see where the graph is below the x-axis. Okay, now what this is asking for is strictly below the x-axis, so it's not interested in the x-intercept, which is right here. So I'm going to put an open circle around that. And then what the graph wants for us to do is look at this part of the graph. All right, and say where that's happening. Well, if I temporarily make that a lot bigger, And that would be straight up, not like I drew it. If you can see this, here's the vertical asymptote and here's the x-intercept. We're going to be looking at this little piece of the x-axis here between the vertical asymptote, the VA, and the x-intercept right there. All we have to do is find the vertical asymptote. Wait, let me do one thing at a time here. Wow. I zoomed in to 1,094 uh, 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 wow. <laughs> um, let's make this a little smaller there. All right. Okay. Yeah, see just this little bitty bit of the x-axis is where the graph is below the x-axis. So it's going to be between the vertical asymptote between the vertical asymptote and the x-axis of uh, 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 x-intercept. As soon as I'm through with this, we'll take a break. And it'll be done soon. All right, so let's look at our f of x. The x-intercept is located where log base 3 of 3x plus 16, where it actually equals 0. This means on the x-axis or touching the x-axis. All 
All right, and now the vertical asymptote is located at the point where 3x plus 16. Well, let's talk about the domain because is located at the point where 3x plus 16 Well, all right, it's, this is how to say it. So let's just do this. Let's just find it. The thing about logarithms is that the argument of the logarithm function must be positive. Okay, semicolon, not zero and not negative. So to find the domain, because vertical asymptotes always occur where numbers are taken out of the domain. The domain, you have to calculate what the domain is by doing this. 3x plus 16 itself, the argument has to be strictly greater than zero. So we're going to solve this. Subtract 16 from both sides. Okay, so it has to be strictly greater than that. For that reason, the vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 16 over 3. So now we know, now we know what that vertical asymptote is. It's at x equals negative 16 over 3, or just between us, negative 5 and 1 third. So let me blow this up again. that this point right here is um, um, 
negative 16 thirds. Negative five and one third, in other words. Now all we have to do is find that point. Oh, okay. Now to find the x-intercept, we're going to say that f of x equals zero because that is the definition after all of what an x-intercept is. It's where the function equals zero. So, we're going to have log base three of three x plus 16 equals zero. X is trapped inside the logarithm function. How can we solve for it? We need to get it out. There's only one way to do that, and that's to use the definition of what a logarithm is. Turn it into an exponential equation, an exactly equivalent exponential equation. This is the base. This is the argument. This is the exponent. So what I need to do is change this to base raised to the exponent equals the argument. I can do that. The base is 3, the exponent is 0, equals the argument is 3x plus 16. So now, any number raised to the 0 power is 1, and also x is out from prison now. Jailbreak. Okay, one equals three X plus 16. Now all we're gonna do is solve for X. Minus 16, minus 16. One minus 16 is negative 15. Sixteen minus 16 is zero. Now to solve for X, I divide by three and I divide by three. So X equals, well, 15 divided by three is five. So this is going to be negative five because a negative number divided by a positive number is a negative number. The X intercept is at negative five zero. Right here, this, here we get bigger again. Big, 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 big. Okay. That number right there is negative five. So for this little bitty distance here, from where should I say this? Where should I write it? Write it down at the bottom. Solution. Between negative 16 thirds, which is really negative five and a third, 
and negative five, the graph is below the x-axis. So how I'm going to write that, let's put a colon there. Here is the solution, negative 16 thirds to negative five. For this little piece of the x-axis that you almost can't see, the graph is below the x-axis. All that to find out that. So let's see what they give us the answer. Yeah, right there, negative 16 thirds to negative five. So what we did, what we did is to find the x-intercept, we solved this equation. And to find the vertical asymptote, we had to solve well greater than zero because of course it's not allowed to equal zero or any negative number nor any negative number right so to find the vertical asymptote, you solve this. And generally speaking, whatever the argument is, you set the argument greater than zero. Can't be greater than or equal to. It's got to be greater than. So to find the x-intercept, you do this. To find the vertical asymptote, you do this. And to solve this, you're going to need to translate it to an exponential equation, which is what we spent way too much time doing over and over again. All right, let's take a well-deserved break. Um, it's 9.30, so be back. I'll be back at a quarter to 10, and we will do uh, the arithmetic of logarithms. Something you, you need, something you need. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I will see you in a few minutes. Fifteen minutes, to be exact. 